What's going on everyone? It's a beautiful day out there. I am loving it. Um, in many ways, that is. It's quiet. It's starting to, I think it's spring right now pretty much, so it's a really beautiful day out. I mean, let's, let's check it out. Oh, it's gorgeous outside. I mean, it is like legit beautiful day. I can't complain. Anyways, we've got a lot in store for us. Uh, a lot of things happening, a lot of things coming up. We're busy, I don't know. Uh, many of you guys, most of you guys, I should say follow us. We are uh, the leading E9X BMW platform for the aftermarket community, and we have been for the past about a year and a half now, uh, I would say is when we would have topped that, or claimed to be that would be our claim to fame, I should say, basically. So anyways, uh, you guys probably saw a lot of things, but I just want to kind of give you an update. I think it's pretty cool. We've got some cool carbon trim. This is for an F30, obviously, as you can see. Uh, we are moving into many F-Series things. This is also for an F30. We have the complete set, but this is just a display. This is forged carbon. Really, really neat stuff. But um, F14's pop most popular selling wheel, a lot of F54 stuff, tile, HKS, authentic, obviously Japanese. And the usual, we've got intakes and yada yada yada. Moving back here, we got a bunch of things going out, CSF and whatnot. We're prepping a bunch of things. We've got MHD wireless adapters. These have been extremely popular. So if you haven't gotten one, pick one up. This I think is pretty cool. So if you have an automatic car, say for an E90, you don't have paddle shifted, but you want them, boom, this is all you need. Plug and play. As long as you have everything else for the wheel, like your paddles and you know buttons, this you just plug in and it will uh, recognize it as the as having paddles. So in other words, if you have this, no paddles. But you want paddles, you just need to get a paddle wheel, get some of these, you're good to go. Uh, as you can see, the E90 version of the honeycomb. A lot of wheels getting staged, so we take photos here. We've got a lot of Alcantara things being made, so we've got uh, these regular stock ones with the warning label. We'll turn them into Alcantara. These are kind of on haul right now just because of the whole virus thing, COVID-19 is kind of... I don't want to say ruin anything, but we get our materials from Italy, genuine Alcantara, so it's kind of messed up. Uh, the other pieces to that, I think it's freaking beautiful, but to each their own. Got a lot of wheels, so these are all being boxed up. So we've got, what here, six, eight of them, I don't know. Six going out Monday. So you can see this one's got the LED display, full Alcantara flat bottom, and tri stitching. The works. I think this one's a carbon. Yeah, this one's a carbon one. Very similar, but carbon and a bunch, you know, other ones down there. But anyways, those are my wheels. Or sorry, tires. Got a bunch of things. Moving back. All right. So yeah, we got a lot of things going on. I think there's a not a wheel in here, but we got a bunch of taillights going out. So we've got three boxed up ready to go tomorrow. Uh, those are the black lines, which is what you see here. These black lines are the ones that are going out. We've been selling a lot of these. Pretty neat. Uh, sequential, as you can see. Boom. Not my favorite thing, I'll be honest, but uh, we needed something different. So, But I like the look of it. The look is perfect because of the monochromatic contrast with the gray and the color, the black and everything. I think it looks good. but. And of course, we've got a busy shop going on. So, you know, we've got an E61 back there getting steam speed stage three turbos and N54 535. And we got a bunch of, as you can see, things just lined up here. So, busy, busy, busy. Anyways, the moment you guys are waiting for. So, I wanted to talk again just briefly about the air, hair suspension and what it means what you see, what you get. So 
a lot of you guys know that if you don't a lot of you guys heard accu air went out of business um for the reasons why it's unofficial, but a lot of people speculate certain things, which I'm not going to talk about, but it, limiting our factors as to what is up there, basically. So I'm running airlift. I've been running airlift. I always have had airlift. Um, actually, I take the back. The first one I had was a piece of junk, but I'm running airlift now and I have other airlift systems. So that's my preference. I don't have anything accurate air except their tank which is i think still pretty stellar it's called the endo cvt we'll talk about that later but uh, i'm running an airlift setup that means i have an airlift rear uh strut and bag same with the front now the uh, the front sometimes has what they call a bag over coil setup and the rear is different because it doesn't it is it isn't set up like that but in other words you have a your, your simple suspension, which normally you would have springs, you have bags instead. So if you look under the car, which I can show you some other time, you'll see that there are bags and you have your strut next to it and the bag will inflate and deflate giving you, you know, the height of the, uh, the vehicle and you can slam it. Because I can't tell you how many times people have told me, oh, how do you drive like that? Well, it's not, let me show you. So, if I start the car. This is my controller. Now my controller allows me to uh, set the height setting and monitor my system. This is an old airlift controller. They call this the V2 management system, so. They have newer, flashier ones, but this is the one that I use, and I think it works fine, to be honest. So, you have four buttons here, and I'm gonna kinda give you a demonstration of what they do. So, just looking at it now, you can see there are four numbers um, that go across. That is the PSI of each, each corner. Front left, front right, rear left, rear right. This is my tank, the PSI of basically how much air I have in my tank. So, if I were to press the first one here, you can see that's my setting, 49, 49, 69, 69. That's what basically I would set my height to. Uh, so in other words, from where it is, it would probably go up a little bit. Now my next setting is a little bit higher, 55, 79, 79. For example, this would probably be like my, if I uh, wanted to maybe drive with a passenger or two, something like that. This would be my ride height, which is the first one, passenger, maybe clearing some big speed bumps or going up some really big stuff, the numbers go higher. Those are my three settings that I use, typically. And this one here is probably my, you know, lower lower height, and then down here would probably be like rolling into shows, something like that, if it's a flat surface, I can get down to like 30 front, 50 rear. And this is my, uh, usually what I use to, uh, I guess have like my photo shoots. Aired out front, 32 in the rear. I don't really like tucking the rear tire, so that's kind of where I have it. And this is zeroed out and all the way up. So that's just what I use. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I were to go to the, say the, let's let's do this one. Let me show you this one. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and press this. Confirm, and it starts to drop. So you can see everything just dropped right away on the fly. So now my front tires are tucking and my rear is pretty much sitting where I want it. And like I said, this is how I have my, my shoot set up. So this is kind of how I have it when I park, when I sit, when I go like to a photo shoot or a show, whatever it is. That's how I have it set up. Now on the contrary, seeing some of the other ones, if you want to see how I could have it all the way up or even higher to where it was before, you saw my ride height. Let's say I want to go clear some speed bumps. See that? Yeah, 
it's going higher still. Likewise on the front. Thus giving me the ability to kind of clear some stuff, speed bumps or going up a something steeps, you know, per se. But then I can drive it like this. So it's flexible and it goes on the fly and it's all managed by your your controller, which is your management system. I have a tank and compressor, which you can hear running actually, back here. So you can hear that. If I'm gonna be completely honest, it's it's uh it's loud when you're driving. I don't have rear seats, so you can see I have the rear seat delete, and that's nothing but wood. So that's not gonna basically uh, dampen any sound or remove any of the noise that comes from the back. So I hear it pretty pretty clearly. It's annoying, but uh, you know if I'm gonna be honest, I got used to it and. It's not something I hear all the time, only when I'm using the compressor, which is probably a couple times a day. Uh, another reason why I like having the Endo CVT tank from Accu here, which is uh, what I have over there. I'm going to be going in a different car. Um, but other than that, not too bad. So, um, let me also kind of give you another demonstration here. Pull up to the all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration on the height adjustment and show you live kind of like what it looks like all right so right now it's in basically the aired up not all the way but pretty much you know where I would have it if I'm clearing stuff and I'll go all the way down to the um, not the zero, but the one that I used to park, so. So, I mean, I hope that makes sense. I mean, in a nutshell, that kind of gives you an idea as to how the air suspension works because a lot of people ask, you know, how do I drive when it's basically aired out or, you know, frame on the ground, it looks like to them, or fenders all the way tucked over the tire. Easy answer is I don't. And hopefully that kind of gives you an idea as to what I use and how that works. Um, this is my ride height. So I do ride at this height, which is still pretty low, but, I like to have a pretty aggressive stance, if you will. I think I'm gonna make another video just based on the wheel specs, what I recommend, what I've ran. I've had over 20 sets of different wheels um, that's touched this car, whether I own them or not, but I've had over 20 sets that's been on the vehicle itself. Um, this is, I, th I think, actually like the 21st set or something like that or whatever it is, but I lost count anyways. And um, I'd like to help people out with wheel fitment, the fenders, rolling, pulling, what you can do, tire specs, camber, suspension, all that stuff. So I'll make another video on that in the future. But I hope you get the idea of how this works and I hope it's been insightful and resourceful. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comment below. Um, these right now, just to kind of give you an idea, the tires and wheels I'm running right now, these are TE37s, these are OG. These are not only authentic, but they're the OG. They're not the SLs, they're not the RTs. I'm running a nine, I'm sorry, 18 by nine and a half. 22 offset in the front, 18 by 10 and a half, 20 offset in the rear, 235, 40, 18 front, 265, 35, 18 rear. 
uh, running Toyo Proxis Sports. Shout out to my homies. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm running. And I am on airlift, obviously, with very minimal, very, very, very minimal camber. So this is my ride height, and that's as zero as I can have it on both front and rear. I don't like, I don't like the whole tilted thing. So, but yes, and I do appreciate you guys watching. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. Subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.